Scene 7, time two hours later. Ernie, Molly, and Saul are sitting at a dinner table, and dinner is just ending. <coughs> oh, that was a wonderful dinner, Tilly. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. I hope you liked the dinner. It was swell, Mom. Just fine. After all the junk they fed you in the army, this is a welcome change, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me, Mrs. Levin. Oh, before I forget, Mr. Friedman says hello. Tell him hello for me too, will you? I will. So, Molly, are you still in school? I'm in my senior year. I'll be graduating next year. That's good. I I should have stayed in school. Oh, so now stop. You know you had to go to work to help support your family. Yes, I know, I know, but still, everyone should get a good education. So, young lady. Stay in school and graduate. Yes, sir, Ariel. That's right, Molly. Stay in school. Maybe even go to college. College? Oh, that would be nice. Gee, Mrs. Levin, I don't know if my parents would like that. They want me to go to work, make money. Well, that's important too, sweetheart. <coughs> you, you listen to your parents. Uh, what's wrong with Molly going to college? Oh, nothing, son. But uh, if her parents are saying no, uh, then they must have their reasons, and Molly, being a good girl, I should listen to her parents. After I graduated high school, some of the guys at school went to City College while me, like a schnook, went to work in a toy store. Now, I'm in the Army while those guys got good jobs. Maybe after the war, you'll be able to go to college too. The problem is, who knows when this war will end. You know, son, we needed you to go to work. You know that. I wasn't making enough to support the three of us, and Ma could just do so much laundry on account of her back. Pop, I didn't mean to pop off. You, you know I'd do anything for you and Ma. How were we blessed with such a fine boy for a son? It's just too bad that he has to go away again. Oh, Ma, please don't cry. <laughs> I can't help it. You're away, and your father is trying his best to earn a living, and I'm just so worried. There, there, mother, there, there. I'm so sorry. No, Mrs. Levin, please don't apologize. We are all worried about Ernie. You worry about me? Of course I do, all the time. I didn't know you felt that way about me. Now you know. Uh, Mother, let's go into the living room. Maybe the kids would like to be alone. Yes, Saul, so. maybe you're right. That was a wonderful dinner. Yeah, dinner was good. Real good. When do you have to go back? Ten days from now. Maybe we can do some stuff together while you're here. Like what? Go to movies, go to Central Park or Coney Island. It's a little cool for Coney Island, unless of course you like cool weather. I wouldn't mind it at all as long as I was with you. Wow, Molly, I really don't know what to say. You know, I'll be waiting for you. That's wonderful to hear, Molly. I, I think you're swell. If it were summer, we could go for a swim at the pool or maybe go to a ball game at the polo grounds. Polo grounds? To, to go see the Giants? Are you serious? Sure, why not? My uncle is a security guard and could get us great seats right behind home plate. What makes you think I'd travel all the way to Upper Manhattan to see the Giants? I'd rather go back to the Army. Next thing you'll be telling me is that you, you want to see the Yankees. Well, I'll have none of that, you hear? My team is the Dodgers, the greatest baseball team in the world. If you're root for any other team, then you gotta be a dumbbell. You think I'm dumbbell? I don't know what to think. One moment, you're making eyes at me and holding my hand and telling me that you'll be waiting for me, and, and now this! How can you do this to me? To us? Come on, babe, how can you not root for the Dodgers? I never said that I don't root for the Dodgers. But you want to go to the polo grounds. No Dodger fan would ever want to go to the polo grounds. Ever. Are you serious? I'm serious. The Dodgers have been my team for as long as I can remember. My whole life revolves around the Dodgers. I worry about them the way you worry about me. To love me, you got to love the Dodgers. I don't understand why you're getting so wound up over this. It's only baseball. Only baseball? How can you say that? Are you not an American? Whoa, what's all the commotion? Mr. Levin, I believe you now. D did you two have an argument? That's OK, Mr. Levin, don't worry. Good night, Ernie. Do you want me to walk you to the train? Don't bother. What happened? When we left the two of you were practically lovebirds. 
I return and she's giving you the cold shoulder. If I told you, Pop, you wouldn't understand. Ernie's alter ego enters. You again! You are such a schmuck. That girl loves you and you're giving her a hard time over nothing. The hell's wrong? Leave me alone! End of scene seven. Scene eight. Time, January 22nd, 1944. Place, Beachhead at Anzio, Italy. A combined U.S.-British military force is trying to outflank German forces located inland. The goal, gain control of Italy. Ernie is crouching behind an embankment. Sounds of bullets ricocheting all around. Another soldier quickly enters and ducks behind the embankment. The soldier is Barney. You're all wet. Stop your complaining, pal. We have bigger things to worry about. It's you! Holy smokes, I can't believe it. Thousands of GIs crying all over this place, and I wind up being stuck here with you? Great. Listen, Jack, I'm not good with this either. Just looking at you gives me the ease. You and your Boston Braves. Me and my Boston Braves? What about you and your Brooklyn Bums? For all I care, you and your Bums can go take a fine jump in the lake. Watch what you say or else. Or else what? You're lucky there's a war going on. Otherwise, I'd clobber you mad. Tough guy, huh? Meanwhile, look who's crouching like a dog. Look who's talking. Where's the rest of your squad? We were told this operation would be a cakewalk. Some cakewalk. What are we even doing here? Something to do with trying to outflank the Germans. Something the Germans? On this crummy beach? Hey, what do you want me to say? You asked me, and I told you. We're here, the Jerry's are there, they're pissed at us, and now I'm pissed. Pissed at what? At you, the Krauts, the army, at everyone, okay? You happy now? I'm happy now. Shut up! I, I didn't ask to be here. Where the hell's our air cover? Where's the rest of your squad? I don't know, we all got separated. Mine too. What are you doing? Moving out, and the quicker the better, so I don't have to be around the likes of you. What the hell did I do to you to get you so steamed up at me? Dad, got us pinned down. Hey, Smoke, do you hear that? What? I don't hear nothing except bullets and you flapping your mouth. Wait a minute, I, I hear something too. Ernie and Barney pick up their rifles. Suddenly a bunch of men rush onto the stage. They are German soldiers. They are pointing their rifles at Ernie and Barney. Hands off! Hands off! The German soldier motions with his hands for Ernie and Barney to drop their rifles and raise their hands. Ernie and Barney comply. Now we're cooked. Still! Yes, Okay, okay. Rouse! We're moving! Don't cough. Get your nets off me. The German soldier hits Ernie on the back with the butt of his rifle. Ernie collapses. When I tell you to move, move. The next time I won't be so nice. For you, the war is over. End of scene eight. Scene nine. Time, March 2nd, 1944. Place. An interrogation room at Stalag 51. A German prisoner of war camp. Two men are on stage. Ernie and another man, Lieutenant Otto Hedinger of the Wehrmacht. Both men are seated across the table <laughs> facing each other. On the table is a telephone and a fold of the paper. According to our records, you are Private First Class Ernest Levine. That's correct. You are an American. That's correct, too. You were taken prisoner at Anzio, correct? Right again? So far you're batting a thousand. Batting a thousand? That's a baseball term. You like baseball? Yeah, I follow it some. I follow it too. Germans follow baseball? <laughs> That's news to me. Of course we do. Who hasn't heard of Babe Ruth? Everyone's heard of Ruth. Too bad he didn't play for the Dodgers. I agree. Uh, Dodgers happen to be my favorite team. They are? They happen to be my favorite team too. When I lived in Brooklyn, I went to Ebbets Field all the time. Saw dozens of games there. You did? I can't, can't believe it. Here I am in a POW camp in the middle of nowhere and run across a Dodger fan who happens to be a German. What's the odds of that happening? We Dodgers fans need to stick together. You bet we do. Do you happen to be Jewish? With a name like Levine, what else would I be? Good. I like Jews. I had uh, lots of Jewish friends in Brooklyn. How long did you live in Brooklyn? Uh, eight years. I worked in a warehouse somewhere near the bay. My uncle has a metal shop at Bush Terminal. Interesting. Did you work in your uncle's shop? For a couple summers. Doing what? Shipping clerk, stock boy, stuff like that. 
where were you living in Brooklyn? I was uh, visiting my aunt who lived in, uh, I think they call it Sheep's Head Bay. I know Sheep's Head Bay. Great place. Fancy restaurants. Once went out with a girl who was from Sheep's Head Bay. Did uh, anything develop? Nah, it didn't work out. Why? She was too stuck up. Nothing I did was good enough for her. So I dumped her. Women, the more you think you know about them, the less you really know. You got that right. And to be straight, do you really believe in that master race crap? Of course not. It's all rubbish. Glad to hear that. It's too bad we have to meet under uh, such unfortunate circumstances. I think you and I could have become friends. I think you're right. But just because I'm sitting here and you there, doesn't mean we can't swap stories, does it? Absolutely not. That's good to know. Could you do me a favor? If I can. Uh, could you find out for me if the Dodgers made me trades during the offseason? I'll be glad to. Gee, thanks. Well, Private First Class Levine, I found our conversation very pleasant. We'll be speaking again soon. Can I leave now? You may leave. Major von Strathuysen. Hello, Major Hedinger here. I made excellent progress today. I think we found our perfect dupe. Even though he's a Jew, he seems to be clueless and naive and easily open to manipulation. Give me a little more time and I'll be able to gain his cooperation. I told him I lived in Brooklyn. He believed me. He likes the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball team. He made a very strange request. He asked me to find out if the Dodgers made any trades during the offseason. Frankly, I had no idea what he was talking about. I'll make so up something. He won't know the difference. Yes, Major, I realize we don't have much time. I know that Sternbahnfeuer Eberhardt is demanding that the prisoner be turned over to the Gestapo. He does realize, of course, that Levine is a prisoner of war. Yes, sir. I'll keep you informed. Good night. NC9. Scene 10, time three days later. Place, same as scene 9. How are you being treated? Me and the other guys can use a little more food. We're doing the best we can to provide adequate rations. Try to do better. I have something for you. Hey, is there any envelope? What's this? Open it and find out. Read it. Newt, Rockney, Sammy Baugh, Benny Leonard, Sid Lookman. What is this? It's what you asked for. What are you trying to do? Play me for a sap? The, the names on that paper aren't even baseball players. You need to lower your voice and remember where you are. You're using my hometown team, the Brooklyn Dodgers, to try to con me. I have nothing more to say to you. Look, Private Levine, you may not believe this, but I'm the only person standing in the way of you being sent to a concentration camp. I thought I was a POW. But you're also a Jew. And you're a Nazi. What's your point? That you must play ball with us to use a pun. Screw your pun. Look. The names on that paper were an honest error. My clerk knows nothing about baseball. Please, accept my apology. Can your apology? You really let me down. I thought you were a Dodger fan. It's all a bunch of malarkey. I am a Dodger fan. No, you're not. You're just saying that. Does that mean we can't be friends? Who says we're friends? You called me a Jew and threatened to send me to a concentration camp. Some friend. I have no more time to waste with you. We need someone to keep us informed on what the prisoners are saying in the barracks and we want you to be that person. So you want me to be a snitch? In return for your cooperation, I will give you my assurance that you will not be sent to a concentration camp. What if I say no? I'm afraid that refusing is not an option. Maybe to you it ain't, but to me it is. You know, when you told me you were a Dodger fan, I actually believed you. Thought we could be pals, real friends. Boy, was I wrong. You just wanted to use me. You couldn't care less about the Dodgers, and that hurts. Is there anything else you want to talk to me about? You're making a big mistake. You Nazis made a big mistake when you started this war. Go find somebody else to be your stoolie. Now let me out of here. By the way, it's Luckman, not Luckman. End of scene 10. Scene 11 time the next day. Place. Interior had a prisoner's barracks at Stella 51. Ernie and Barney are talking. They are alone in the corner of the barracks. We gotta bust out of here today. Keep your voice down. I'll pipe down, nobody can hear us. The guards outside can hear us. Bunch of flat foot dopes. Armed with rifles and machine guns. Ah, oh, go on, that's all a show. If they were going to kill us, they would have done it already. How do you know that? Because we're still alive. That's how I know. I also know that I gotta get out of here. 
Soon it's going to be spring training, and I got to find out what's going on with the Dodgers. I've been away from them too long. Here we are, stuck in this dump, slowly being starved to death, and all you can think about is the Dodgers? Yeah, that's right. What else is there? Surviving? Winning the war? What are you, wacky? We're alive, and we're going to win the war. So what are you worrying about? That's the difference between a Braves fan and a Dodger fan. When things get rough, you guys bail out, but we Brooklyn Dodgers fans never bail out. You and your Dodgers? You're nuts. How do you like a knuckle sandwich? Here we are, prisoners, and you're still wound up with the Dodgers. Yeah, that's right. And if you don't like it, tough on you. Hey, off already. Now oh, stop your whining. How come they wanted to talk to you? They wanted me to be a snitch, but I told them to go jump in the lake. Why are you? Ask them. I don't run this place. Can they talk to you? No. So why are you asking? Forget it. Well, something must be eating you because you brought it up. <laughs> I bet you think I'm a spy. <laughs> I was just talking. <sighs> You're no spy. You're too goofy. There you go with your name calling again. Why are we even arguing? Because your team's the Braves, while mine's the Dodgers. I can't even begin to imagine what must be going on. I'll tell you, inside my head, there's a little birdie telling me to get out of here so I can find out what the heck's going on with my Dodgers. Now, are you going to go with me, or do I have to do this alone? Why me? Two heads are better than one, right? I don't want to leave you here so you can badmouth the Dodgers. What if we get caught, and our gooses are cooked? Who says we're going to get caught? I don't think I'm a coward. Who said anything about being a coward? Busting out of here has nothing to do with being a coward or here. It's about reconnecting with my team, period. Why is that so hard to understand? Because you want to risk your life for a baseball team. Not for a baseball team. THE baseball team. And you should feel the same way about your team. You're insane. You don't get it, do you? I live for baseball. It's my life. Being stuck here is slowly choking me. That's why I gotta get out. Without my Dodgers, I'll die. The Dodgers don't even know that you're alive. So what? They don't need to know that I'm alive. It's for me to know that they're alive and doing well. They're all you Dodgers. So wacky. Can the name Colin? All I want to know is if you're going with me. Let me think it over. What's there to think over? What's there to think over? Plenty. Like, you don't even like me? Of course I don't like you. You're a Braves fan. How can I like someone who roots for the Boston Braves? And if I do say yes, bad luck. Don't worry about that. Leave the plan up to me. Let's take a walk outside. Ernie and Barney are standing outside of the barracks. A German guard enters. Hey, I need a smock dude. Guten Tag. Danke. Suddenly, Ernie punches the guard, knocking him out. Ernie grabs the guard's rifle. Let's go, and make sure you take his wallet. Brooklyn Dodgers, here I come! From off stage comes the sounds of men yelling and rifle fire. End of scene 11. Scene 12. Time, six months later. Place. A room at an army post in Brooklyn, New York. Standing at a podium is a U.S. Army Brigadier General. General Arnold Devereaux. Behind and at Devereaux's right are Ernie and Barney. They are in dress uniform and are standing at attention. Tilly, Saul, Molly are seated in front of the podium. Dear guests, today is a special day. Today, the United States Army shall honor two of our finest soldiers, Private First Class Barney Hermachevsky and Private First Class Ernest Levine. Their story is now well known, but worth repeating. Six months ago, both of these men, at great risk to their own lives, successfully and on their own initiative, escaped from, no from the notorious German prisoner of war camp, Stalag 51, located deep inside Germany. Relying entirely on themselves and each other, they managed to evade recapture, and finally, after a long, arduous journey through the hundreds of miles of enemy territory, reached friendly lines. During their journey to freedom, they collected a wealth of information on enemy deployments and dispositions. This information has saved countless American and allied lives. In recognition of their valiant service, we are convened today to award each of them the Distinguished Service Cross. Devereaux opens a box, removes a medal, affixes it on Barney's jacket, salutes Barney, and then shakes Barney's hand. Devereaux then opens a second box and repeats the same formality with Ernie. Gentlemen, on behalf of the United States Army and the American people, I want to congratulate you for your truly exceptional acts of courage. An entire nation is grateful for the service you have rendered. You are hereby dismissed. Devereaux exits. Tilly, Saul, and Molly join Ernie and Barney.
Thank the Lord! Oh, my boy is home! It's great seeing you again, Mom. Congratulations, son. We're sure glad you're back. And you too, my boy. Thank you, sir. Hey, Big Shot. Remember me? Molly, how are you? I uh, hope, hope you're not still sore at me. I couldn't stay mad at you. What's important is that you're home. Uh, how long will you be on leave? For a month. A month? That's swell. We can do a lot of catching up. I have a girlfriend who would like to meet you. I'm game of she. We could go on a double date and have a lot of fun. Sounds great to me. Where do you like to go? I give you a little hint. Batters up. Those words are like music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie sold your ego after. After all you've been through, you're still acting like a kid. That's right, pal. And I'll never stop acting like a kid as long as I live. And if you don't like it, then tough on you. The Dodgers mean everything to me. Hey, Sarge, form them up. Yes, front and center. Yes, yes Krill Sergeant. Now please tell these fine people why I love the Dodgers. Remember the Brooklyn Dodgers. They were a special team. They had the greatest fans and were held in high esteem. They had a bunch of players, like Ducky and Kiwi, who gave it all they had. It was something great to see. They won a lot of pennants and played with much aplomb. They had fantastic pitchers, like Sandy and Big Don. They also had great batters, like Gil and Duke and Dolph, who hit a lot of home runs as if the game was golf. And then they had a player who played at second base. He acted with much courage and broke the bounds of race. But still, sad day happened. The Dodgers moved away, which left the gaping chasm that nothing could defray. They say that time is a healer, but not for Brooklyn men, for whom the Dodger ballpark was more than a playground. Torn down but not forgotten, the park still lives inside the hearts of the Dodger faithful who recall it with much pride. So farewell to Kirby Hickby, goodbye to Whitlow too. Adios to Mickey Owen and to all the Dodger crew. They gave, they gave us lots to root for, for. It, it sure was, was lots of fun, fun. When, when they were the kings of Brooklyn and had their moments in the sun. The end. <laughs>